Hi, it's Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and I wanted to talk about our homeschool planning, or as I've heard it called, reverse planning. Didn't know that was a thing, but we stumbled upon it, and it's the way we're doing things, so in case you would like to know more about it, um, here it is. So what we have done this year is we have identified which subjects we want to work on on each day and we've got enough time that we can spend about two hours to cover two subjects so whether that really comes down to an hour each subject or one goes a little bit over and the other one's a little bit less whatever we have a little bit over two hours and we've decided to cover two subjects a day so first of all I want to start with our schedule or our routine um, this year we are participating um, in a uh, small group opportunity for my learner to get electives done in a peer group so there um, is an option now with uh, all the appropriate restrictions in place for children to meet up um, very close by to where we live and they are offering PE on Mondays and Wednesday mornings and then Mondays right after PE there's art and Wednesdays right after PE there's Lego robotics so we have three basically electives that we are doing on Mondays and Wednesdays so each of those is an hour so there's two hours that my kid leaves goes and does their electives and then they come back so our homeschool on those days basically consists of getting up getting ready to leave the house and then we do roughly 45 minutes to an hour um, before they go to the electives now what we do on those times is our morning work, which is in another video, um, but we also, if we have more time, then we read. We just um, continue to read through either our history books that we're reading or um, continue to read through our language arts books. And that just gives us time to read um, when we don't also have to do the work to go along with it and you know we can cover more of the reading. Um, so Mondays and Wednesdays we don't have any other subjects we might do some extra reading but we're not planning for any other subjects it's really just elective days so we have Tuesday Thursday Friday that I do school and then Saturdays that dad does a science lesson so on Tuesday Thursday and Friday we want to make sure we hit language arts so we do language arts we plan to do language arts Tuesday Thursday Friday um, then we want to spend two days doing history uh, so generally that's been Tuesday and Thursday for history and then um, the science curriculum that we have has one day for physics and one day for engineering and dad does the engineering on Saturday so they get to do hands-on stuff so Fridays we do the science so we basically have language arts and then either history or science on that day um, so that is the gist of of the schedule now the reason you didn't hear math any of that we're using teaching textbooks for math and my learner is completely independent with that and they do that as independent work after uh, in the afternoons on their iPad so I don't have to worry with math I check in we see how it's going um, we also do writing on night zookeeper um, three days a week math is every day um, on the iPad independently night zookeeper is Monday Wednesday Friday independently and then um, there's also Spanish on Mondays and Wednesdays but again those are all independent I got a fourth grader they're independent I don't have to do all of those parts okay so we're really just talking about the stuff that I have to sit down and do which is language arts Tuesday Thursday Friday history Tuesday Thursday and science Friday with me Saturday with dad so from there 
<laughs> um, we then decided that we're not going to be so focused on like keeping the recommended pace with any particular curriculum. We are going to work through the next section ish um, or wherever we get to um, given that day. And I'll show you what that looks like in my binder with some of the curriculum here in just a minute. Um, but I found this, like I have no idea, it's one of those freebie kind of calendar things that you get um, from someplace. But um, I use this, it's a Monday through the week, and this is where I can note if there are things that we're going to do differently. So um, we did our mushroom hunt today, and that's the only thing that we did for school. Um, Tuesday, I have car school because Tuesday we've got to go into town. Um, we only have one car, so we got to drop my husband off. We got to take people to the airport. Um, and then we, um, will have to be back in town and sometimes it's just not worth coming all the way back. Um, if it's nice, we just find a place in town and we do some of our work. So I have car school and we're going to try and do language arts and history on that day so that I remember we want to pack the books that we're reading and we might not do any of the writing. We might just do the books and we'll just read. So it'll kind of end up being like a read day, but we'll just get um, more of the reading and discussion parts done from our language arts and our history. Um, Wednesday, they'll be leaving. So then Thursday, Thursday is going to be language arts and history. Um, I don't have anything in particular. This is where I would check my work calendar, um, see if uh, there's anything that affects the, our normal schedule. Um, so we're going to do language arts and history. Um, Friday, we're going to do language arts and science. So I just put those down. If there is anything that changes it up, then we do that um, and we mark that. Or if we're going to like skip a day of history today or if we got to flip flop things or whatever and then dad's going to do science. So, um, so we have a general idea. I also have a little calendar. I've just been circling the days that we actually do school versus the days where we might do something like a little field trip or we went to the state fair, etc, etc. So that way I'm kind of keeping track of what we're doing. I have these just in the pocket of a notebook. I've got paper I can write on, but I haven't noted anything yet. Um, I gave myself a little flashcard so I could just remember what our plan was in the beginning. So Mondays and Wednesdays, here's the independent work. They leave to go to the center. Um, we do some morning work before they go. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we do our morning work. We're also going to do these on um, that pattern that I talked about. Um, oh, this one says Thursday in the weekend. See, whatever. We've already changed it up. And then um, the independent work on those days. So I just have all that handy. Um, with regard to the curriculum, I keep things in a binder. Um, all of our curriculum this year was digital download and then we print it ourselves. So I have sections here for, there's language arts. Um, here's the science, which is the physics section. And then here's the engineering. Um, that curriculum also comes with like an optional profiles in science. Um, and then we have history and I have some divider tabs because we actually have two history curriculums that I'm just kind of weaving together. Um, so I have those divided up and then I just have extra stuff at the back because you never know. Um, I have not printed out everything for the whole year. This is not all of our subjects for the whole year. I printed out about six to eight weeks worth um, and I'm going to continue to do it in those chunks. So instead of printing a whole lot and then having it left over, um, because we might not get to it, um, which is, um, part of what is here in our language arts folder is some of these that's left over from last year. We didn't do 
the Mighty Miss Malone, and we didn't do the Secret Garden. And I thought, well, maybe we'll do those this year. We haven't yet. Um, but then I have the next one for this grade, which is Miss Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. But I'm still waiting on the book. So we'll uh, figure out all of those things. But so I'm only printing out the sections that we're using um, at that time. So for language arts, we're picking one book. I'm giving my learner the choice. So of the books that I have, and I have units to do them, we're not necessarily going sequentially um, with the curriculum uh, because I'm pulling from uh, different curriculums. So we're just going by the books. I'm letting my learner choose what book do you want to read? They pick the book. I print out the language arts materials that we need for that. And that's what I have in here with the exception of these that had already been printed. So I'm just leaving them in there. Okay. Um, with science and engineering, we did the same thing. I actually need to print more because I only printed out the first four wonders. So the first four weeks. Um, so we're a month in uh, as far as what we're doing. So I will print out the next ones. I use paper clips. When so if I print out four weeks, then I'm going to paper clip week one week um, when it when we finish it. So it's really easy to just turn to the section where we are. And then the ones that we finished, I'll take them out uh, for record keeping. We um, only have to take pictures, so I'll take pictures and then I will file them basically in a box. I don't have a good filing system with regards to that. Um, but uh, put the papers in a box. <laughs> and um, then I can go back and get them later if I needed them. Um, but otherwise, we are just doing it in little chunks like that. Um, now history is a little bit different. Because like I said, I've got two curriculum, and I'm interweaving them so for the curriculum i have one that goes by like lessons and so we're about three lessons in and we haven't moved on to lesson four because we're spending more time on it from the other curriculum and the other curriculum that we have i have decided that we're just going to check off which ones we cover and then so they have this and they're like, here, this is what you would be doing. Well, we've read the um, the spine for it, like the the sort of the fact based um, side, but we haven't read the storytelling book yet. So we're not like in the same place. So I just marked off what we've covered per day and then we can go back and fill in the gaps. So here. We've done this one, but we haven't done this yet. So I've got these marked and I'm trying to go where we're not, we're jumping through several books, but we're not jumping ahead in the timeline. So that's why we're on like week four with one curriculum. And then we're not, we stopped at week three with the other one. And then when this one catches up, then we'll jump back. Is, is that making any sense at all? <laughs> anyway, so I'm marking them off there. So for history, I did print out the first six weeks because this curriculum, week six, has a dig deeper. And it's sort of like that's the unit and that's the chance to kind of catch up. And then they both sort of move on at the same pace. So that is how we're tracking our history. Um, so basically, actually, that's how we're tracking all the things is binder with dividers and paper clips and sometimes maybe sticky notes, but I'm only printing out um, a few sections at a time. And then we're just spending that time that we have on them. So we have um, we spend about 45 minutes to an hour on our morning work. We have two hours to cover two subjects. We get through what we get through and I mark off what we've done or I put a paper clip so that we know where we are so that the next time that we come back to that subject, we just pick up where we are there and we're not bound to completing a certain lesson at a certain time 
or even completing one lesson that it says would be done on one day or within one week, yeah, we might spread out over a couple weeks. Or for some of the language arts stuff, it said to spread it out over a couple weeks and we didn't need to, we did it in a few days. So it really is flexible. I don't have to rewrite in my calendar or my planner like lesson five, lesson six, and then, oh, we didn't get to it. Now I have to mark it out and now I have to change every lesson after that. I don't have to worry about that because I just have that we're marking on language arts and then I'm marking in the binders when we're completing these things. When my kid writes stuff, we always put a date on it and I snap pictures of it for our homeschool records. So that's all we need to do. Let me know how you are keeping track of your curriculum, how you are planning or reverse planning or whatever we're calling this, where we just um, do the subject and we don't worry about whether or not we completed the whole lesson and we move at our own pace. Let me know how you're tracking that. Thanks.